It is important to not only have functional wipers, but also ensure that our wipers are effective. Check your wiper blades today. Wipers constitute the basic minimum safety on the road. Thank you for tuning in. I am Lydia ODJ for Chief. Iglesias will call for deadline 360. In order to tackle the current security challenges in the country, many states and local government councils are collaborating with local security outfits and vigilante groups. Just recently, the House of Representatives passed for second reading a bill seeking to amend the 1999 Constitution to allow creation of state police and legalize regional security outfits. Already, several states and uh, geopolitical zones have established vig vigilante groups and security outfits with various code names. But how can these outfits be strengthened and um, properly monitored? This is the focus of uh, Weekend File. The Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps NSCDC is the agency responsible for the registration and regulation of local security outfits. So the Deputy Commandant, Directorate of Critical National Assets and Infrastructure of the NSCDC, Jonathan Iogo, will join me in the course of the program to clarify some issues. Um, Joseph Johnson, let's bring you the news first. <laughs> President Muhammad Buhari Saturday condemned repeated bandit killings in Zamfara and Kaduna State, urging the nation's military to respond to the worrying situation in a language that the bandits understand. The president notes that the military and other security agencies are now working on new methods and policies that are yielding good results in many of the troubled parts of the country and calls for a crushing response to the killing of innocent citizens in the rural communities. He also notes that the nation, its military and the entire population need to summon the courage required to defeat the bandits and terrorists. President Buhari condemns some politicians making utterances on security, merely seeking applause, advising them to join the ongoing genuine efforts aimed at la finding lasting solutions to the challenges confronting the nation. He expresses the nation's sorrow over the loss of lives, urging security agencies to do everything possible to prevent the recurrence of attacks with impunity. 
Meanwhile, the federal government has promised to eliminate all threats to national security as a formidable action plan will soon be launched to defeat criminality in the country. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, stated this after an audience with Zamfara State Governor Bello Mohammed Matawali in Abuja. Mitari Ben reports. The Zamfara State Governor is the latest state chief executive to defect to the governing APC, and this visit to the SGF provides ample opportunity to deliberate on the spate of banditry as well as counter-terrorism operations in the state and other parts of the country. The SGF says government will spare no resources to guarantee peace and security, not only in Zamfara State, but across the country. I can tell you that uh, the federal government is putting up a comprehensive uh, work plan to deal with all forms of insurgency across the nation. It's not only Zafara that is experiencing that, but you can see that it's pacifying uh, gradually, and I believe that uh, with the collaborative efforts that we are putting in place uh, would definitely ensure that Zafara gets out of the wood and takes its appropriate place and uh, on, the, on the path of uh, development and sustainable uh, growth in this country. We need more truth and uh, more support from the federal government, particularly on the issue of banditry, which we have discussed, and uh, he's going to take our discussion to a higher level. In a separate audience with Governor Dave Umahi of Eboin State, discussions centered on the need to promote national unity. Is to uh, join uh, Mr. President and the Chief of Staff and uh, the AGF to build a united uh, Nigeria. The SGF assured Governor Mahi that the Buhari administration will work with Southeast leaders to increase infrastructural development in the region. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikben, NTA News. Katsina Area Command of the Nigeria Customs Service has intercepted contraband with duty paid uh, value of over 80 million naira. Acting Comptroller General of the Command, Dalha Wada Shedi, who made this known while displaying the seized contraband, says the smuggled items were intercepted at different locations along Katsina border with the Republic of Niger. The intensified efforts of the Katana Area Command of the Nigeria Customs Service towards anti-smuggling activities to protect the nation's economy has continued to yield the desired results. As part of the effort, the command intercepted 16 vehicles, either smuggled or served as means of conveying contraband, 217 bags of 40 rice of 50 kilograms each. We promised them all those who are really bent on smuggling activities, this is a clear way for them because we will never allow them to achieve or to get actually what they are, they aim at. Acting controller of the Katsina Area Custom Command, Dalha Wadachi, decided the interceptions were made along the illegal routes into the country and reaffirmed commitment to fighting any act of economic sabotage. In Katsina, Shehu Adamu, NTA News. Nigeria Immigration Service says it is considering deployment of drones for effective surveillance and monitoring of activities at the nation's border. The Comptroller General disclosed this at the end of a senior management retreat organized by the United Nations International Organization for uh, Migration in Lagos. John Joyken Abapoya reports. For some time now, the Nigerian immigration has been deeply engaged in scaling up effective border control management and visa and residency administration policy, which are important to enhancing Nigeria's security architecture. The service has been engaging border communities to achieve this feat and also adopting the use of technology, a critical tool in achieving modern and effective border security. This three-day retreat tagged strengthening migration management through best practices was therefore an opportunity for personnel to assess strategies so far adopted and acquire more knowledge and processes and procedures for enhanced security and better management of migration. There is no way we can succeed with either machine or strong men with a gun and patrol until we work with the community. So border community relation is key. It has been discussed. Strategies have been developed. It's going to be used effectively. We are looking at 
a lot more than just uh, the, the policy, but also um, all of the uh, integrated approaches, including uh, creating a secondary inspection system um, within the Nigerian uh, uh, um, uh, airport. A communique at the end of the event, jointly signed by the Controller General Immigration and the Chief of Mission International Organization for Migration, resolved that the Nigerian Immigration Service commit to delivering a safe and orderly border control system across service windows to improve passenger facilitation in Lagos. Joy Ken Abakuya, NTA News. The Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, wants the contractors handling the construction of the Leki Deep Sea Port to stick to the earlier agreement on delivering the projects by the second quarter of 2022. The Minister said this is imperative to open up more cargo destinations for investors while stimulating the growth of the nation's economy. Michael Olale reports. Sitting on 90 hectares of land, the Lekki Multipurpose Deep Sea Port is projected to handle around 1.5 million 20-foot equivalent units per year, thereby providing berthing for larger vessels. So far, the 1,909-mile-long core of the main breakwater has been completed while work on the key wall and landslide infrastructure is progressing. The minister believes the progress is significant enough to deliver at the stipulated date as against the fourth quarter of 2022 requested for the commencement of commercial operations by the company. So this is moving forward. This is what you call progress. We believe that by the time you complete this, complete burning, complete the bomb, maybe and the worry, then you, you have better and more standard seaports. Currently, the order is STS, ship to ship transfer, right there deep in the water. You want to stop it by ensuring that vessels can come directly to the port, can call to the port and discharge goods. The project, which is a build, own, operate and transfer arrangement with 45 years period of consensus, we complement the Nigerian Ports Authority mandate of fast tracking cargo turnover while serving as ready-made alternative to their papa ports. We definitely we have uh, more traffic coming this way. For instance, it's faster here. We believe by the time they complete, the equipment are more modern, the cranes are bigger and, and more modern. The minister, however, said the request for the extension of rail line to the deep sea port is visible, but not immediate, as the federal government is currently concentrating on connecting Tinkan Island ports. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. The federal government will be using foreign missions to promote exports of goods made in Nigeria with a target of attaining $30 million worth of exports by 2050 and creating 500,000 export-driven jobs. Minister of Foreign Affairs Geoffrey Yama, while on a visit to the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, said the future of Nigeria lies in trade and the Promotion Council is strategically placed to help Nigeria trade its way from pandemic to prosperity. Leah Katun Babatunde reports. Nigeria accounts for the largest share of sub-Saharan Africa's diaspora remittances and despite the pandemic, $16.8 billion was remitted in the year 2020. This meeting here is aimed at driving targeted non-oil export initiatives that will generate income as Nigeria gravitates towards a future independent of oil revenues. Missions abroad have been instrumental in driving the penetration of Nigerian non-oil products with room to do more. Symbiotic relationship and we're going to be cooperating and uh, so these uh, export houses are things that um, you know we're learning about now and we will do whatever we can uh, to, to support the process in the, in the rollout. Federal government's initiatives to improve Nigeria's exports include the Export Expansion Facility Program, Nigerian Diaspora Export Program, and Export of Services. The services sector is the arrowhead of our participation in the African continental free trade area. Uh, so Africa imported over 12 billion worth of IT services in 2018. Now we must reverse that. 
Mr. Awolowo is optimistic that this partnership with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will birth inclusive socio-economic growth and development, especially as the world and export marketplace has changed due to COVID-19. In Abuja, NTA News. ...has been finally uh, delivered to the Federal Ministry of Water Resources for onward handover to the farming communities of Kanu and Jigawa states. The Minister Suleiman Adamu told the excited benefiting communities that President Buhari's directive for Nigerians to produce what they eat and eat what they produce is a philosophical answer to food security and economic empowerment. Meijama A. Adamu has more. Excitement in the air and emotion leading testimonies by beneficiaries who understand better the language of the president with reference to making Nigeria self-sufficient in food production. We have over 5,000 to 10,000 farming families that benefit directly from this project. To us, this is better than money printing machine. Conceived and started by the defunct Petroleum Trust Fund, Gar Irrigation Project covers over 2,000 hectares of irrigable land cutting across Kano and Jigawa states. Minister of Water and Resources Suleiman Adamu, who reaffirmed federal government's determination to create more agricultural and economic empowerment opportunities for especially the youth, said, in addition to this project, expected to productively engage 2,000 farming families. Most such projects are earmarked to cover additional 5,000 hectares in Jigawa state. Governor Badaro Abubakar of Jigawa said was particularly elated that bright future is assured to the teeming youth of Nigeria, stressing that his government will leverage on the developmental deliveries of the federal government for sustainable economic empowerment of his people. Emir of Kazori Najib Hussein Adamu challenged youth against roaming across other parts of the country in search of livelihood now that opportunity is right at their doorstep. Both the project consultants, contractors, and other stakeholders attested to the extra passion exhibited by the federal government in bringing the project to fruition. In Kano, my Jama Adamu, NTA News. The people of Mararaba, Guruku, uh, Kachiyaku District and the University of Abuja communities in Nasarawa and the FCT say they will forever remain grateful to President Mohamed Buhari's administration for their ecological interventions in their areas. This was during the inauguration and handing over of the projects executed by the Ecological Fund Office. Abdullah Jia reports. The first port of call for the marathon inauguration of ecological fund projects captured in the second quarter of 2019, as approved by the Federal Executive Council, was the over 8-kilometer access road, Gurku IDP Camp, in Karulukul government area of Nasrawa State. With the perennial ecological challenge now history, governments and the contractors are on the same page on the quality of work delivered. There is no doubt in my mind that the project will enhance and improve the health status, social economic activities, and the general well-being of the people of these communities. We must thank His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, for approving this road project. I also want to use the opportunity to call on all members of this community to guard this laudable project and ensure that the drainage channels are not misused by indiscriminate dumping of waste. Leaders of the community commended the government for keeping to its word. I want to sincerely appreciate the federal government of Nigeria for this great intervention. Thereafter, attention shifted to the University of Abuja, where the academic community benefited from the construction of drainage, retaining walls, erosion control, Another commitment delivered by the federal government was the erosion and flood control works at Kuchiaku 1 district in Kujie Area Council of the FCT. Abdullah Hajia, NCA News. Houses and farmlands valued at millions of naira were destroyed following a heavy downpour that caused flooding along some bridges in Taraba State. Jebrin Musa, who monitored the situation, completes the report. 
The heavy downfall which started in the early hours of Saturday lasted for about four hours, a situation that caused River Magoy to overflow and submerge Magoy Bridge and surrounding houses. <laughs> Residents of Nasarawa quarters around Donga Bridge along the river were also affected by the flooding. All our belongings have been destroyed. We don't know what to do. We appeal to the government to come to our aid. In fact, so many families don't have what to eat because their food stuff, everything is inside water. During the flooding, some residents have to manage to climb trees to save their lives as houses collapsed. At the scene to sympathize with the victims was the chairman, Jalingo local government council, who expressed sadness over the unfortunate incidents. Asima, Nima. Business activities were completely disrupted. In Jalingo, Jibreem Musa, NTA News. With the Delta variant of COVID-19 detected in the federal capital territory, Health authorities have uh, re-emphasized the need for all to take responsibility to forestall a third wave of the infection. Hakim Ataliu in this report takes a look at the possible implication of the newly confirmed case. Time. There has been a decline in number of confirmed COVID-19 cases across the country, including the federal capital territory. However, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control on 8 July 2021, confirmed a case of Delta variant described as variant of concern, which is the most easily transmitted. Speaking on the development, Acting Secretary, FCT Health and Human Services Secretary, Dr. Mohamed Kau, noted that the detected case is being handled professionally as others. Delta variant, also known as B1.617.2, uh, has been isolated among some of these uh, travelers that are coming in. So all the protocols of management, testing, quarantine applies 100%. Uh, the FCT administration's current resolve not to let anything slip to chance through robust checks and adherence to safety protocols. The government has put very stringent measures for all those coming from the uh, red flags of the world and any Nigerian coming uh, from that part of the world are allowed in but they are quarantined for seven days they are tested at day two and day seven with the possible threats from Delta variants in Nigeria the FCT Secretary of Health stressed that continuous vaccination remains a potent force against the infections in Abuja Hakimat Ali NTA News. President Muhammad Abari has expressed sadness over the demise of Malam Muhammadu Ibrahim Egari, his classmate in college and a prominent community leader. Quote, his passing away is a loss of is a loss to all of us, his classmates, in whose hearts he had a special place. He was a complete gentleman and a selfless person who endeared himself to all who came close to him. My special condolences to his brothers, Alhaji Yazid Ibrahim, Senator Abu Ibrahim, and Barrister Yahab of Katsina State over the loss. And the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, has consoled with troops who were involved in a road accident on Thursday, 8th July 2021 at Garin Kuturu along Meiduguri Damaturu Road while responding to a distress call. Sadly, one of the gun trucks conveying the, tro the troops skidded off the road and tr rammed into a road shoulder, causing the vehicle to somersault. Nine personnel who sustained varying degrees of injury in the accident have been evacuated and are currently receiving medical attention in a, a military medical facility. No fatality was recorded in the accident. General Yahya lauded the groups, the troops, I should say, for their swift response and urged them to be more careful during emergency operational responses. Let's take some messages now, and when we return, don't forget, uh, I will be having my guest, Jonathan Iyogo, Deputy Commandant General, Critical National Assets and Infrastructure, NSCDC. So stay with us.
Nigerian youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria, pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. Dear compatriots, our country can be as great as we want. Let us all commit ourselves to its greatness. We must be willing to set aside our differences, unite and stay as one. In our expansive landmass, human and material resources and plurality lies our strength. Let our challenges lead us to rediscover our common ground and together let's find solutions. This will take some time, so it requires patience, tolerance, and forgiveness from every one of us. Let all hands come on deck to protect and transform our country. Let us unite and see each other, not as adversaries, but as brothers and sisters. Together, we can build a better Nigeria for ourselves and for the next generations. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency, NOA, with support from Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. To watching NTA Weekend File with me, Joseph Johnson. In the wake of security challenges, especially kidnapping for ransom experienced in neighboring states, the Federal Capital Territory Administration is partnering security agencies, including local security outfits, to ensure adequate intelligence gathering. Safia Neoma Uche in this report takes a look at the involvement of vigilante and private security uh, groups in the fight against crime shows that with the involvement of local security in crime fighting in the FCT, there has been a decrease in crime over the years thanks to the slogan, when you see something, say something. This is as the local vigilante groups have proved effective in the fight against crime in communities, reason being that they are closer to the people and will know when strange faces appear. 58-year-old Daniel Zaki, a farmer, says security has become a part of him. No, we heard of any information that where bad people are staying, and they are short time in the data, we normally go there and then find out what's the problem or if possible, we normally also arrest them in the data and hand over to police. The challenges facing them include lack of weapons and financial support from government or any other source, but they are dedicated to ensure safety of lives and property. The police say the local security has played an important role in curbing crime over the years, which is why it holds periodic meetings with them. Not to carry fair arms per se, but they have their own gun guns. The FCT commander of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Peter Mergeri, says there are more than 13 registered private security groups in the FCT. And we keep on you know, the training and retraining of persons just to improve on their daily performance. The vigilante are working directly with the police. We ensure that the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense do the right thing in the sense that whatever they do, they send in a periodic report. We scrutinize such a report to determine uh, what type of input. 
security does not just happen, he added, but as a result of collective consensus as well as accurate timely information. Safia Noma Uchi, NTA News. An inclusion of local security outfits to deal with crime at different levels of the society is not only to complement mainstream security establishment, but also a step towards decentralizing the nation's security apparatus. Adeni Taiwo reports that this move is yielding positive results in the campaign against crime in Lagos State, with calls for more coordination and border roles. The reputation of Lagos State as a land of opportunities keep drawing many to it, crowding its 3,577 kilometer landmass with more than 20 million residents and still counting. Just as this burgeoning population represents opportunities, it has largely exposed the city to threats, a surge in crime being one of the challenges. <laughs> The terror reign of Bado in Ikorodu and one million boys in post ensas era are some of the ugly examples. Our police boots on ground are grossly inadequate. We know look and crane where all the evil criminals are. And that is how, how, how the, the issue of Bado was put to rest. Every time we submit all this information, they swing into action. The most recent one is the abandoned vehicles. We found out that, that a lot of hoodlums nowadays, you know, they don't keep weapons in their houses again. Now where they keep their weapons are inside of our door vehicles. When you move around the Lagos states, you see them located everywhere. And when you see such, such uh, uh, security outfits, there are tendency for people to realize that I can easily be caught. The suggestion is that more should be done to integrate these outfits into the state security architecture with emphasis on coordination of the activities and provision of logistics. We need to have a, a policy in place that will coordinate them, that will make them, that will make uh, rules for them. The use of the body one camera again is going to do a wonderful job for us. For a total victory over insecurity, they also urged members of the public to be more vigilant to ensure a crime free society. In Lagos, I, I will be having Jonathan Yogo, Deputy Commandant General, Critical National Assets and Infrastructure, NSCDC. You're welcome to Weekend File, Mrs. Jonathan. Thank you very much. All right, so um, let's begin. Uh, the launch of the regional security outfits attracted controversies and uh, in some quarters were already, you know, arguing about how, you know, the, the whole scheme will be. So what were the major concerns raised? Um, thank you very much. Uh, Nigerian Security has Civil Defense Corps by our mandate. One of the core mandates of the core is the to monitor them, to supervise them, to ensure that the purpose of which they were set up is not delayed. So when this uh, regional security outfit came up, we thought that they should come on board, just like the private security company or other uh, security groups like the Vigilante Group of Nigeria, the Hunters Group, because we are already discussing with them uh, in order to also regulate their activities. So the, for the regional security, uh, I don't know how to call them now, they will need to come on board so that the Nigerian Security and Civil Service can also take them on and give them a kind of uh, legality. Okay, so um, let me ask you this. How would you assess the contribution of um, local security outfits and vigilante groups in fighting you know, you know, crime and criminality? Definitely, they are important in the security architecture, especially when it comes to community policing. When we talk about community policing, it's not uh, a term that uh, it is just for one security agency alone. Everybody has to come on board for security policing. And these groups, they are vital tools because in terms of uh, fighting security, you need uh, intelligence reports to be able to make us proactive 
rather than be reactive. So they, they are very, very important. And uh, the Commander General of Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, Ahmed Abubakar Audi, is, has upped his uh, uh, sleeve to ensure that they are integrated in whatever we do to provide security, particularly for the local, lo local communities. By probably, uh, we are looking at uh, using technology for their reporting system. We call it the quick reporting and quick response system, whereby information can get to us on time. And we already have a response team that is close, close by and also integrated in that particular system. So, you, you know, um, when it comes to securing the, the entire country, the, the security agencies alone cannot do it because uh, the number required is not enough. But by the time we aggregate these uh, uh, local security groups, yes, it will help us to go a long way to be able to track and then uh, probably prevent the activities of criminals in yeah, those yeah, areas. Yeah. Talking about tracking now, uh, the, you know, the, a lot of Nigerians are agitating for a decentralized police structure, but there are also fears, you know, how can these outfits be monitored? We organize uh, training sessions for these outfits, because by law we regulate them, we license them. And the licensing is such that uh, it's an annual renewal, okay? And uh, by the law setting up a uh, civil defense, because I want to uh, hammer more on civil defense, because that is my organization. Uh, I know much what we are doing. Uh, we have a spread, national spread. You will find us in the local post, in the divisions, local divisions. We are in the state. We have state commands, we have zonal commands, and then we also have the national headquarters. And uh, we, whatever we do in national healthcare is cascaded down, down, down to the grassroots. As a matter of fact, civil defense is a grassroots organization, and all of them, all the security um, groups, they come under civil defense. So, for example, the local uh, ones, they have a lot to do with our divisional offices, and the one majority of two also have to do with our command. So, and because of the technology we are deploying, it's not difficult to actually track you know, from the local level because the Commandant General has will soon uh, commission the IES, that is the Integrated Electronic Arrest Reporting System. It's a platform whereby both the registered private security companies and these groups, they will be empowered with equipment to just give us reports. Okay, just, just, just before I, I, uh, we take a break, um, what criteria do you adopt in licensing to avoid infiltration? Yeah, there is a process of uh, licensing uh, the security groups and the private security companies. We have been doing that for quite some time, particularly the, the licensing of them. One, we will make sure that uh, there is no foreigner. Okay that can operate a, a, a private uh, security outfit. And also, it cannot be on the board of these companies. So there are set down uh, 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 rules. rules that you know, that help us. And then at least a retired military or paramilitary officer must be on board or be a director of a such company. And the director must not have been dismissed mm. or uh, probably uh, discharged or otherwise removed while he was serving in the security uh, agency from where he comes. And of course, we take their, their um, data to SSS for screening. First and foremost, you have to register your company with CAC and you must state there that you are going to do security uh, um, job. And then after that uh, CAC registration, you now bring it to us, which we will now use to process the licensing. 
And of course, the Honorable Minister of Interior has to approve uh. for anybody to run a security outfit. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, but we will still continue our conversation just after these messages. So do stay with us. You go see me now. You you go. Call your body and everybody. Yeah. Make we start to the corner. You go see me now. <laughs> everybody they dance. Where are you there now? Oh ah! You go see me now. Ah! I find sir. Give me a surprise. <laughs> Nobody knows. I like to receive it from my mama's pot. <laughs> Glow, the best data plans in town. Dial star triple seven hash. Go TV Biggie Ghost promo. Don't learn. Better diggy levels. Better grooves. No hard at all on top Go TV. Make you not miss this a woof as Go TV price don't go down low. For inside Biggie Ghost. Promo. Now, you fit get Go TV decoder, Go Tenna with one month max subscription. Will be 9,500 naira before for 6,900 naira now. See discount. <laughs> Make yourself enjoy football for inside your house. Cross your leg, watch BB Niger drama and shows for Africa Magic and international series. Then Biggie Goals promo now for you. Better discount. Go get your own now now for only six thousand nine hundred naira to enjoy max levels for Go TV. This offer not go to tell. Go TV, love it. Hooray! You can now buy and register a new Airtel SIM card and enjoy eight times bonus on all your recharges. Visit any certified Airtel shop today with your NIN and get instant double data and eight times bonus on every recharge. If you don't have NIN, you can also register for it at the Airtel shop. This offer is available to all new Airtel customers. Airtel, the smartphone network. The petroleum industry bill and its prospects for Nigeria. What are the critical issues involved? Find out on NTA Tuesday Live next week. Tuesday Live, every week at 10.30 p.m. It promises to be incisive and educative. Join us. Efforts by members of the Civilian Joint Task Force Vigilantes and Hunters supported by the Borono State Government have assisted the military and other security agencies record success in the counterinsurgency operations leading to restoration of a uh, significant level of peace and return of socio-economic activities. Maimoun Agaraba reports on this and how it was achieved. Members of the civilian JTF, vigilantes and hunters are the major local security outfits in Borno State, actively and consistently assisting the military in the counter-insurgency war and are playing critical roles in trying to end the over a decade-long Boko Haram crisis. Since the emergence of civilian JTF in 2014, they have been working side by side with the military, where their concerted efforts resulted in chasing of insurgents from Meiduguri, the Borno State capital. This onerous responsibility has brought a sigh of relief to the once traumatized residents of Meiduguri, as the insurgents no longer live with the people. Local security and community surveillance are keeping the insurgents from entering to establish cells or plan attacks in the city center. We have given the security agents the appropriate uh, intelligent information of where these uh, Boko Haram members are camped or if they are going to bring an attack. We have an information and we used to pass the uh, relevant information to the security outfit. These local security outfits being fully supported by the state government as they were given new patrol vehicles, uniforms, paid allowances and provision of other security gadgets to enhance their patrols. This administration not hesitate to take any measure or make any sacrifice 
in order to ensure peace and security returns to our states. The Police Community Relations Committee in Borno is also assisting through surveillance, passing information on criminals and public sensitization on importance of security. These collective efforts have led to the liberation of communities, rescue of abducted persons, ongoing resettlement, resumption of agricultural practice, and reopening of some notoriously dangerous roads for movement without escort. In Maiduguri, Maimuna Garba, NTA News. Security operatives, para, uh, paramilitary organizations and school administrations in Bayelsa State are collaborating to find solutions to peculiar security challenges, especially in the rural communities. Their efforts uh, is complemented by the Bayelsa State House of Assembly, which is currently working on a community safety bill targeted at protecting citizens from attacks. Uh, we'll get uh, details of this uh, report in our subsequent newscast, hopefully. Okay, um, uh, let's just uh, get back to our discussion now, as I still have uh, with me my guests in the studio. So um, let's, let's get your take on um, the controversy of control, the question of who eventually controls the apparatus you know, of a state police. Mm. Well, I I would say if there is uh, going to be state police, of course, uh, by the name, it's a state police. So the the, the governor should uh, be the one to control the state police. Should be, but of course that does not preclude the federal police. Okay, so there is this other issue of uh, whether you know the state police will promote sectional uh, interest or ethnic uh, sentiments. Well, I may not be able to say that because uh, it's not my area of uh, jurisdiction. Yes, but uh, you, you will. Uh, I'm sure you can weigh into it in either you know to dispel such a uh, worry or you 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 know you still have you know to speak to the issue yeah you know uh, we kind of looking at uh, protecting uh, lives and uh, property in nigeria mm -hmm. and um, whatever structure any of the security agencies has if the government feel they need to tinker with is so be it because we are all reporting to to the president through our various ministries okay so we, we we're talking about regional security outfits and how it can be strengthened you know for it to perform optimally so what are some of those you know areas you think that uh, can strengthen you know these outfits if you say the regional security outfit Maybe we are talking about the civilian uh, JTF. Yes, the, the entire outfit, and of course, talking about the vigilante groups. Okay. And then the hunters group. Yes. One way we can strengthen them is to first of all look at, uh, identify them, what they are doing. Then what do we really want them to do? Okay. Then we can then analyze their activities. And of course, if the analysis shows uh, some shortfall, we will be able to redesign the process for ensuring the security in the, in the country. So we, we go into registering them because, for example, we, we have registered uh, quite a number of, uh, of, of them you know, according to their regional spread. We have a biometric uh, data bank where we register and capture the, the security groups and their um, operatives. And of course, we um, organize uh, seminars and training workshops for them. For example, in, the, in next month, by August 9 and 10, by August 9 and 10, this month, we having a seminar where we are inviting all the private security companies, uh, chiefs, and uh, all these groups, where we educate them and let them know the emerging trend and how to deal with those situations. So these are the initiatives that the Commander General has brought on board. 
So by, by so doing, we'll be able to put them on the same page and then they will operate in line with the laws of the, of the country. So we, we actually um, uh, also help in making them to use the ADR mechanism. Because in most of these uh, communities, you have the headers and farmers uh, conflicts, you have border, you know, boundary disputes, you know. So we, we are involved too in uh, using ADR. And we have quite a lot of uh, trained uh, personnel that have done so. So even as far back as uh, 2019, we were able to resolve about 13,000 cases okay. nationwide. Okay. The last year, it dropped to 11,000 cases. So this, we also hope to bring these uh, groups on board by giving them the requisite uh, training okay, and so, education. Okay, just before I let you go, is there any penalty for airing organizations? Yes, of course. We can downgrade your license. We can upgrade your license. We can even... Uh, uh, step down the license of uh, any of these groups. So there, certainly there are punishments for breaches. All right, thank you very much, um, Jonathan Iyogo, Deputy Commandant General, Critical National Assets and Infrastructure, NSCDC. It was really a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much. All right, um, let's take a break now. Do stay with us. Improving the physical and mental well-being of families of officers and men of the police force is the task before the wife of the Inspector General of Police, Hajara Usman al Baba. To achieve this, wives of police officers led by wife of uh, the IGP converged on the Eagle Square, Abuja, to observe a health walk. Francis Form reports. <laughs> Health is wealth, so spouses of police officers and men embarked on health work to strengthen the mind and to be physically fit. About five kilometers walk at the city center of Abuja, some active, others tired and ambulance available for those who could not complete the distance. The exercise this morning comes under health. Took off from the Eagle Square. at the Poa International School, Area 11, Garki, Abuja, then rounded off with a free medical checkup. By exercising, you feel great, you feel fit, you feel complete. This is one of our cardinal um, objectives, to make our wives of police officers come out every other Saturday to keep fit. Coming barely 24 hours after the engagement on placing with quality parenting, strategy and life after retirement, the health work is expected to be replicated in all the various state commands. Franks is from NTA News. Let's bring the sports now with Badi. Many thanks, Joseph. Let's begin with mini football as host Nigeria now walk a tightrope in the second African mini football nations cup after losing two goals to three to 2018 runners of Senegal in their second group game Saturday evening at the largest sports resort Ibadan. Correspondent Kenne Magbodike reports that the coach Fabian Daba led side has been condemned to a must win game against Zambia in their third group game on Sunday. Just a little mistake, we saw the goals and whatever. It's a football game. I'm, I'm, I'm assuring you, we're going to qualify. That's what I have to say. Tomorrow we will play another game. This is our next step. And we will do our best to, to, to pass this, this step again. 
Right, let's talk league football now. After the Kada FC beat visiting Heartland 1-0 on Saturday, attention shifts to the remaining match day 32 games of the Nigeria Professional Football League on Sunday with leaders Aqua United going up against defending champions Ayimba. FC Fanyo Barra home to second place Nasarawa United with Rivers United and Warrior Wolves trading tackles while Kano Pillars play away to Sunshine Stars of Akure. Away to Europe now, the stage is now set for Sunday's final of Euro 2020 as Italy and England go head-to-head -head at the Wembley Stadium. It is the first final appearance for the three Lions who have considered only one goal in this tournament while the, while the Italian opponents were on a 33-game unbeaten run are after their first win since 1968. Well, the debate is, is it coming home? Or going to Rome. Similarly, Argentina and Brazil are set to battle it out in the final of the Copa America. The Celestial are after a sixth title with the La Abiceleste, who are now seeking a 28-year you know, after a 28-year trophy doubt, and now after their first win, the match which will be played at the iconic Maracana Stadium in Rio de Janeiro comes up 1 a.m. Sunday morning. And finally to tennis, Ashley Barty has become the first Australian woman to win the singles trophy at Wimbledon for the first time since 1980 after edging out Karolina Pliskova in Saturday's final. The Aussie held off a comeback bid from her opponent to, to claim a 6-3, 6-7, 6-3 win, which won her a second Grand Slam title. The, the men's final comes up on Sunday between Novak Djokovic and Matteo Berrettini. And of course, that's sports. But I'm sure Joseph will be very much, you know, happy that Aqua United are still leading when it comes to the Nigeria Professional Football League. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Thank you, buddy. Now let's take a look at the weather forecast. Hello, we've had good rainfall distribution within the week, especially by the extreme north and the south eastern states of Enugu, Anambra and Imo. Here we have a single day rainfall report of 61.5 millimeters from Kano, amounting to 22% of its July rainfall climatology and 77 millimeters over a two-day period, amounting to 27% for Casina, we have report of 50.2 millimeters amounting to 35% of its July rainfall climatology and 64.4% amounting to 45% of its July rainfall climatology. Ample rainfall amounts coming from this area will keep monitoring and bring you events as they unfold. For Sunday, not much is expected, both rainfall wise and in its spread. The day should start off with much cloudiness over parts of Kebi and Niger State where there are very slim prospects of some few raindrops in the early hours of the morning. Similar pictures expected over Cross River and Aquaibum. For other areas we expect different shades of cloudiness and as we move into the day we expect activities to spring up here and there with prospects of some rain showers over the high grounds of Ekiti Oshun, northern part of Ondo and Ogun extent tending to Edo Delta, the Delta axis to the coast of River State. And over the central areas, we expect pockets of rain showers in the afternoon stroke, the evening hours from parts of Benue, Nasra, Kogi, extending the Federal Capital Territory, Niger, and Plateau State, where we expect bulk of the rains over the central region. As we move to the northern part of the country from Adamawa, Taraba, Borno, Gombe, and Bauchi, southern parts of Yobe, extending to Kanu, Jigawa, Kasina, and some parts of Kebi and Sokoto. We also expect isolated cases of rain showers with thunder later in the evening. Temperatures are still on the good side. We expect 35 degrees over Meiduguri, 33 over Kasina, 30 over Rivers, and 24 over just in the central states. And that's it from here. Thank you for watching. And that's NTL Weekend File for this week. Thank you for watching. I'm Joseph Johnson. Remember to always connect with the NTA to stand against rape and rapist. Bye-bye.